Good morning, everyone. I'm Jackie Spear, a member of Congress from the 14th District in California, and I'm delighted to join you uh, via this um, conference setting in a virtual manner uh, for DEF CON's Voting Village again this year. I, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am to this effort each year, and a special shout out to Harry Hursty and, and all of you who have uh, weathered many storms to make sure that the DEF CON conference and the voting village um, could continue to move forward. Uh, there is nothing more precious in our country than the right to vote. And to have it in any way manipulated is the grossest act of war. And we don't talk about that in terms of what Russia did in 2016, but it was for all intents and purposes, an act of cyber warfare. So what you do is critical to maintaining our democracy. And I hope that all of you think of yourselves as patriots because you are. And it is pursuing this patriotic duty to make sure that the right to vote uh, remains preeminent in this country and that it is free from manipulation is what is truly uh, very, very important. So um, the integrity of our election system has, I think for a number of years, been subject to um, the impacts of those who want to do damage to us. And uh, I have been concerned about it. I've worried about it. I've spent time talking to Harry about it. Um, I've actually co-sponsored conferences where uh, DEF CON could come to the Capitol and make their case to the members and staff. And Harry has been uh, one of the preeminent speakers uh, on those occasions. And frankly, he scared the living daylights out of me <laughs> the first time I talked to him. Uh, because it made me realize how um, how pervious, um, how easy it is to have these machines be co-opted because there isn't some national standard. Uh, we have always allowed states to um, develop their own systems, and so many counties have their own systems and the number of machines and types of machines have varied. One thing I think we've all come to realize is the importance of a paper trail. Uh, without a paper trail, uh, the ability to act with impunity um, is indeed very great. Um, on the issue of threats uh, to our elections, uh, I'm a member of the House Intelligence Committee, so I've spent many years now uh, observing this particular issue. Um, and I spend many an hour hearing from experts on Russia and its tactics and its interests. Uh, you know, during the Cold War, the Kremlin was very interested in so discontent, uh, disrupting our relations with European countries, uh, discrediting uh, opponents of the Soviet Union. And as I describe all of these things, uh, it sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Because that is Vladimir Putin. He was a KGB operative. He runs the Kremlin as if he is still the head of the KGB. And all of his uh, colleagues, those closest to him, uh, the oligarchs, all were from his early days in St. Petersburg and in the KGB. So much of that mentality continues to uh, infiltrate the uh, theories and objectives of Russia today. So um, we have had some really remarkable things happen uh, because of the digital connectivity uh, that has grown over the last 20 or 30 years. Um, accessing government services, we do digitally now. Uh, engaging in commerce is uh, becoming more and more an e-commerce activity uh, and not a retail brick and mortar store activity. 
um, advancing our education is done online in many respects today. And in the midst of COVID, it's the only way that we are able to uh, provide educational experiences for our young people. But with all of this greatness that has become associated with uh, the connectivity that we have uh, through cyber, also has come some really great challenges uh, for our democracy and probably the greatest challenge in our history. Uh, countries like Russia and China and uh, even Iran now is looking at opportunities to do us harm on one level or another. So um, it's very important that uh, we recognize that we have work to do in this field. No longer are our adversaries separated from us by oceans. In fact, they're at our doorstep uh, virtually every day uh, because they can. And because we have um, not developed a robust level of cyber hygiene um, that uh, is important on every level of government, and, and commerce as well. Uh, we do know that um, Russia has been very successful. Uh, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence found in their report that in 2016, all 50 states, I repeat that, all 50 states were targeted by the Russian interests in 2016. And for example, in Illinois, Russian cyber actors gained enough access to the voter files in Illinois that they could delete or change voter, voter data. So, I mean, you can imagine what they can do if they were able to do that in 2016. I'm certain that they have improved their skills and it's incumbent on us in each of our states to make sure that our systems um, are not going to be subject to those kinds of intrusions moving forward. Uh, in March of this year, social media companies in conjunction with Grafika were able to identify a uh, Russian internet research agency activity where they had taken it one step further, gotten that much smarter, and were using legitimate third parties in uh, Ghana and Nigeria to be able to move their messages forward. Um, so that particular operation used authentic and fake accounts to post almost exclusively on racial issues in the United States, promoting black empowerment and often displaying anger towards white Americans. Their interest is to create chaos, to divide our country. And uh, unfortunately, much like the president does in uh, many of his press conferences. And we all should be concerned about the fact that the president of the United States um, has not found it appropriate to call out Russia for putting bounties, if in fact we can believe um, what has been uh, reported in uh, the New York Times and other news outlets, putting bounties on U.S. service members by paying Taliban, um, by believing Russia, by believing Putin in terms of his uh, calling out and saying, no, we didn't do anything, when all the evidence is so strong and all of our intelligence uh, agencies with high confidence were able to say that Russia intended to and did succeed in intervening in our elections. You know, I'm always um, reminded of the experience of um, Paul Manafort and um, his sidekick, Rick Gates, who met with uh, Konstantin Kalimnik in a cigar private club in New York City, in which Paul Manafort turned over to Konstantin Kalimnik, a known uh, intelligence officer within Russia, turned over campaign polling data. And 
that should have been it. That should have been enough for all of us to realize that there was an effort to coordinate uh, the campaign of then candidate Trump and the Russian interference. So um, I think it's very important for us to recognize that Moscow hasn't gone away, um, that they intend to sharpen their skills and do whatever they can during this particular election. So um, mail-in voting. Uh, the, the president, unfortunately, continues to uh, undermine mail-in voting, which has been with us for a very long time. Um, he is um, attempting also to uh, suggest that we should postpone the election. Uh, again, another way to distract from what's really important right now. Uh, there's no ability, no power by the President of the United States to postpone an election. It's in the Constitution, it's by statute, and the House and Senate would have to act to do that. And there's no interest in either the House nor the Senate uh, to postpone the election. And it's important to remember that in our history, not during the Civil War, not during two world wars, not during the Great Dep Depression, not during the pandemic in, in 1918, did we postpone the election. We are not going to postpone the election this year. So um, our efforts to expand the opportunity that both the president and uh, the first lady, Melania Trump, have voted absentee in previous years. And if it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for every other American as well. A recent poll by the Pew Research Center found that two thirds of Americans support absentee voting. And they think it should be available to any voter. And that you should not be required to have a doctor's order or request in order to have that. Uh, so it is certainly our intention to make sure that vote by mail is protected during this presidential election. There's also been arguments about voter fraud. You may remember that the president created um, back in 2017 and 2018 a commission to look at voter fraud. And then all of a sudden he disbanded it uh, without much fanfare, uh, but he disbanded it in part because they did not find any voter fraud of any degree that um, would have impacted any of our elections. So I think as we um, defend the right for every American to vote, uh, we've got to make sure there's proper funding. And the CARES Act provided about $400 million to the states um, to prepare for the election cycle this year. Um, and the HEROES Act, which has been passed by the House, but not yet by the Senate, actually provides for $3.6 billion and has provisions to make sure that early voting uh, will be able to continue and that um, we have early voting that is available 15 days uh, before the election, uh, that there should be no excuse needed for vote by mail, and that we should start scanning ballots early so that there won't be the kind of wait um, come election day. So um, having said all of that, let me just um, say also that um, John Lewis provided us with um, some great messaging. Um, he said it's important to get into good trouble necessary trouble. And I think of all of you in this program uh, as being part of making good trouble uh, to make sure that we are a heightened understanding of how um, pervious uh, so many of our systems can be to those that want to do harm to our country. And sometimes, as uh, John Lewis also said, the only way is to get in the way. And I think it's important for us to get in the way of any efforts by Russia or China or Iran or any other country that wants to do us harm, um, that we make sure that um, they cannot get in our way of retaining this democracy and protecting it um, for all future generations. So again, 
thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you. Remember that you are true patriots. Uh, you are a new generation of founding fathers and mothers who realize how important the vote is and who recognize that we have an obligation to police um, our own internet, to make sure that, that um, hostile um, and hate speech and misogynistic speech it is not tolerated and that um, candidates who are running are, are not treated in a manner uh, of disrespect that um, creates an environment where um, there is a suppression of vote uh, because of the hate speech or the misogynistic speech. So um, I hope all of you um, have a phenomenal conference. Uh, I hope you will provide us in Congress more guidance. We are always open to your insights and recognize full well that um, you have much to offer all of us in the country. So bless you all and congratulations again for yet another DEF CON that will enlighten all of us. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman. I'll uh, take it from here um, and we'll get that uploaded and I'll send the, the link to your staff. Thank you so much.